Hey guys, uh, today we're going to have our video on the compound interest, continuously compounded interest, and then as well as modeling with growth and decay. So let's go ahead and talk about first modeling with growth and decay. So somewhere, I don't have room on mine, but um, definitely on your paper somewhere, um, I want you to write these two equations. So we're going to have y equals a 1 plus r to the power of t. And this is going to be exponential growth. So that f the first two questions have to do with the exponential growth. And then the last two questions will be about exponential decay. So exponential decay. So it's the same exact equation except for with growth you're adding and then decay you're subtracting. So let's talk about what each of these values mean. So if we go ahead and start with A, A is going to be our initial value. Let's see, next we have R. R is going to be our growth or decay rate. So growth or decay, depending on, of course, if we're adding or subtracting. And then the T is for time. So this is in years, and our rate is in decimals. So make sure with the rate, because you are given rate as a percentage, so make sure you put it in a decimal, which you just move, move the decimal to the left two times. All right, and then... Um, Right, that's it. We have A, R, and T. All right, so let's go ahead and try a couple of these examples here. So the first one, in 1970, the population of Kern County, California, where Bakersfield is located, was about 330,000 from 1970 to 2000. The county population grew at an average annual rate of about 2.4%, right? An exponential growth model giving the population P of Kern County T years after 1970. All right, so we have our equation Y equals A. 1 plus r to the power of t, so the population is growing. So since it is growing, we know that it's going to be the plus. So a is our initial value. Um, so our initial value was 330,000, so 330,000. And then we have 1 plus, we have the rate, which is 2.4%. Remember, we have to move to the decimal two times to the left, so 0 0.024. And then to the power of t. Um, and this one, instead of having y, we'll equal it to p, since we are dealing with that population. And it did talk about that earlier here. All right, so here's our equation. Um, if you wrote it as P equals 330,000, 1.024 to the power of T, that's the same thing. Um, one just has it added already, the other one doesn't have it added already. All right, and so we, it's just asking for an exponential growth model, so just the equation. Um, so we can solve for anything we need. So the second question about how many people lived in Kern County in 1990. So remember we started at 1970. So from 1970 to 1990, that's 20 years. So I'm going to take 330,000, 1.024 to the power of 20, because that is 20 years. All right, and then from there you plug it into the calculator, and we'll get 5. 130,289. So since we are talking about people, population, um, we don't want to round to any decimals because we can't have, you know, like a half of a person. So we just have a whole number there. All right, let's go ahead and look at a decay model. So a new car costs $25,000. The value of the car decreases by 15% each year. So this decreases, and so that's a really good um, notification that we're using the decay model. So y equals a 1 minus r to the power of t. 
All right, write an exponential decay model giving the car's value y in dollars after t years, then estimate the value after four years. So we have y equals a, our initial value, so 25,000, and then one minus the rate, so it's 15%. Remember, we move the decimal two places to the left, so 0.15 to the power of t, and it does want us to estimate for four years. So let's go ahead and just plug in four for t. All right, so go ahead and plug that into a calculator, and we're going to end up with about 13,050 and 16 cents. So after four years of owning this car, um, this is how much your car would be worth after that time. All right, after about how many years will the car be worth $8,000? So guess and check. Let's first set up the equation. So we want to know, you know, how many years, $8,000. So if I have $8,000, and it's going to be equal to 25000 and then 1 minus 0.15 is 0.85. So we'll do that to the power of t. All right, so let's go ahead and start trying to isolate our variable. So let's see, divide by 25,000 to both sides. And I'm going to get 0.32 is equal to 0.85 to the power of t. So as of right now, we have not learned how to solve for that exponent, especially when we have decimals. We don't even have a whole number to like, you know, try and work with. So we're going to go ahead and guess and check from here. So you're going to take t and you're just going to start plugging in numbers for t. Um, since it is $8,000 and after four years it's 13, right? So we know it's going to be greater than four years. So go ahead and guess, check a couple numbers. All right, and I ended up with t equaling approximately seven years. So after about seven years, um, the car will only be worth $8,000. All right, and there's the growth and decay. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at compound interest now. So compound interest, let's go ahead and create that equation. I have A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N, and then n times t. So if you can see, it's super close to what like my growth model might look like, but except for I am dividing by n for the r and multiplying by n with the t. That's because it's a compound interest, and that's how we use it there. Um, so let's talk about what each of these values mean. So p means principal, which is just our starting amount. And then we have R, which is our rate, still in decimals. And then I have N, which is our number of times it's compounded. And then we have T, which is time in years. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this. So the only thing kind of new is going to be n, which is the number of times it's compounded in a year. So I guess I should add that in a year. So let's go ahead and read our question. So you deposit $4,000 in an account that pays 2.92% annual interest. Find the balance after three years of if the interest is, is compounded. Sorry, compounded, and then we have A, B, C, and it gives us different amounts that it might be compounded. So for all of these, our P, R, and T are all going to be the same. So let's go ahead and name what those are going to be. So we have P is our initial amount, so that will give us 4,000. And then we have R, which is our rate, so 2.92%. Remember, we do want that in decimal, so we're going to have 0.0292. And then we are going to have T for years, three years. So for all of these problems, um, P, R, and T are all going to stay the same. The only thing that changes is the N. And that's based off of what we have here. So if our 
account is compounded quarterly, that's going to be four times a year. So n would equal four. We'll take a look at daily. So if it's compounded daily, that means every single day of the year. So there's about 365 days a year. So 365. And then monthly, there's 12 months in a year, so it's compounded 12 times in a year. So using those, we can judge that. A couple other things you might see would be, um, we don't have to do it for this problem, but you might see weekly. And there is 54 weeks in a year. Let's see, there's, there's another one. If you see the word annually, that's just one. If you say semi-annually, that will be two, because semi-annual, so two times a year. All right, so there's just a couple that you might see maybe in some other problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our equations. So for quarterly, I have, let's have that equation up in handy. We would have A equals 4,000, because that's what we start with. 1 plus 0 0.0292 divided by 4, and then 4 times 3. And then from here, all we have to do is plug this into a calculator. So go ahead and take a second, plug that into your calculator. All right, and we are going to end up with 4,364.82. So that's how much money is going to be in our account if we have it in for three years and it's compounded quarterly. All right, now if we're compounded daily, the nice thing is our equation is more or less going to stay the same. The only thing that changes is the n. So 0.292 all over 365 and then to the power of 365 times 3. All right, so if you have a calculator that has the capability or if you plugged in everything all at once, you can just scroll back up and then put in your new n value. You don't have to worry about trying to retype the entire thing. So that's kind of a nice thing about that. Um, you can also take it step by step. So if you were going to do part by part in your calculator, I would first do the fraction, then add it to the 1, then bring it to the power, then multiply out front. So doing that in the order of operations there. All right. So let's see. Hopefully you plug this in your calculator. I'll give you a second if you haven't. You can pause the video. All right, and I ended up with 4,366.19. So if it's compounded daily, you only make a couple extra dollars compared to qu quarterly. All right, and then monthly, that is n equals 12. I know there's a lot of extra stuff right here. Um, but for this problem, it's monthly. So therefore, I have my same exact equation. 0 0.0292, but this time divided by 12, and my 3 is being multiplied by 12 instead this time as well. All right, so go ahead and second, take a second, plug that into a calculator, and I'm going to end up with 4,365 and 74 cents. All right, and so that's how we would find how much money you would have in your bank if it's compounded interest depending on how many times it's compounded in a year. All right, and then the last part is find the amount of interest earned. So in order to find the amount of interest you've earned, you're going to take the amount you have and subtract the principal. So the principal is what you started with, and that's going to give us the interest. So for that first problem, so for A, I'm going to have 4,364.82, subtract 4,000, and I'm going to get 364.82. So if we have compounded, let's see, compounded quarterly, um, we're going to earn $364.82. So go ahead and try that with B and C. All right, and so for B, when it's compounded daily, we're going to make $366.19. And then compounded monthly, we'll make $365.75. All right. And the last one we have here is compounded or continuously compounded interest. 
And so that equation is A equals P times E to the power of RT. So a lot of times um, we call this as PERT because it does look like a word. I don't think PERT really means anything. But if you hear A PERT, um, that's something that you might have there and see. So the P still stands for principal. And that's your initial amount. And then E, e doesn't stand for anything, but you do learn about E in 8.2. So if you haven't learned about E, if you um, were absent the day you learned it, please be sure to watch that video so you can learn a little bit about E and how that works. And then R is still our rate in decimal. And we have T as time in years. Oops, years, there we go. All right, so our question, you deposit $4,000 in an account that pays 6% annual interest compounded continuously. Find the balance after each amount of time. So we have two years, five years, and 7.5 years. So of course, the more you have it in there, the more money you will make because it is compounded continuously um, from what we have there. So let's go ahead and plug everything in, or let's figure out what P, R, and T stands for first. So we have P, which is our principal, so you deposit $4,000. Oops, sorry, I meant to highlight that. There we go. So 4000 Then we have R, which is our rate, so 6%. Remember, we need to move the decimal two times to the left. Make sure you just don't put it in front of the number. It does need to move two, two times, so 0 0.06. And then our time is years, so um, every year for these is going to be changed to 5 and 7.5. So that's the thing that's changing from each of these. I'll go ahead and put T for this one will be 5, and T for this one will be 7.5. But P and R will stay the exact same. So we can go ahead and plug this into our calculator now. So I have A equals 4,000 e to the power of 0 0.06 times 2. So once again, you just plug that straight into a calculator. Um, if you need to learn about e a little bit, please go back and watch 8.2 so you figure out how to plug that into your calculator. All right, and we're going to end up with 4,509 and 99 cents in our bank account. All right, let's do that again with five years and 7.5 years. So I'm going to give you guys a second to create those equations and plug it into your calculator. So we're going to pause the video and try that out. All right, and there's B and C for five years and 7.5 years. So as you can see, the longer you leave it in, the more money that you'll gain on this particular problem. All right, and then down here, find the amount of interest earned. So, of course, we're going to take the amount we have minus from the principal, and that will be the interest earned. Same exact thing with the compound interest if you want to know specifically the amount of interest. All right, so I'll go ahead and write it out for A. So A, we have nope, 4,509 and 99 cents. I'll subtract what we started with. And that means we earn $509.99 in interest. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Try that for B and C. All right, so for B, we'll end up with 13,000, or 13,000, sorry, 1,399 and 43 cents is how much we earned there. And then for C, we would have earned $2,273.25. All right, and there are your interest problems. So modeling growth and decay, compound interest, and continuously compounded interest. All right, if you have any further questions, please be sure to ask your teacher any of those. Have a wonderful day.